Okay, so how can we have WebRTC and ZIP working together? There are three main options. One is using ZIP over WebSockets from the application and then reaching a PBX that is WebRTC compatible. Uh, option two is using your preferred signaling protocol and yeah, basically building your signaling server and from there converting the signaling to that you were using to SIP and also on the media plane uh, use a media server to convert WebRTC to RTP. Um, the option three is probably the uh, quickest one to have to do is uh, just using a CPAS or third-party provider that already has this feature and they have an SDK for the needed platform. So let's talk about method one, SIP over WebSockets. As you can see in the image below, this approach has three elements. It has an SDK used on the web app that can communicate using SIP over WebSockets and also uses WebRTC. Also, we have a WebRTC configured PBX in the middle and a SIP user agent connected to the PBX at, at the right, the SIP phone. So, uh, of course, this has some pros, like uh, is uh, you're using um, an SDK that already handles most of it, so it has less moving parts. It's easy to have a demo app and running is famous and has been used in some production sites. And you can add some customization as well because you have the PBX. Um, some very common SDKs <coughs> for uh, WebRTC to SIP uh, is our GS SIP and SIPGS. And yeah, uh, on the con side, we have that um, it's not that efficient to use SIP in the web because basically we are sending big chunks of text files to communicate while other um, protocols or like json for example could be a bit more efficient a bit easier to read as well um, also webrtc support in asterisk pre-switch and other uh, pbx is relatively new uh, it has been out there for several years already but it's kind of new and also Advanced features like recording, multi-party conferencing are not easy or even possible using this approach. So for something very basic, this uh, for one-to-one -one calls, probably this would be a great approach. Uh, if you want to add uh, advanced features, uh, this becomes more complex. So what about method two? Method two is about having an intermediate WebRTC gateway and you will be converting basically WebRTC to SIP by using this, this intermediate added uh, server. So um, it will be uh, on one side we will have, uh, as we see in the image, a uh, web user uh, reaching a signaling uh, server and this signaling uh, could be done using JSON for example and then uh, converting that to uh, using the WebRTC gateway to converting uh, this signaling to SIP. Uh, on the media plane, uh, at the bottom of the image, we see that uh, WebRTC, as we know, uses DTLS, ICE, as RTP. Um, that should be converted to RTP, and that's also something that um, the media uh, server should take care of. Um, so basically, we would, add, we would have to build a signaling server, add a, a media server uh, in this WebRTC gateway, and, and then uh, we would have at the other end the SIP user agent. This is the one that offers the highest degree of customization. You can have advanced features in here like encoding, recording, multi-party, conferencing, mixing, broadcasting. So um, probably if you have very advanced features, that would be the way to go. Although um, it has some cons, like uh, you would need to maintain that infrastructure. And of course, it's more complex than, than other methods. Um, it's important to mention that, and we will talk about in, in the following uh, chapters, uh, that Curento, Janus, and Jitsi are very uh, famous open source media servers, and they all are capable of, of acting as a WebRTC gateway, as shown in this image. <laughs> and the third method, um, it's basically using some third-party providers like Twilio or Talkbox, as we see here at the bottom. 
um, what they do is just build things like a method one or, or two. Uh, they have that in their, uh, they support that, they uh, scale that. So basically they take care of all that infrastructure and we just use their SDK. So obviously the pros of that is no maintenance, easy to have a demo up and running uh, through our robust infrastructure and the scalability uh, is taken care of. The cons are that Usually for large uh, scale application that will be more expensive than having your own infrastructure because yeah um, obviously they need to earn so some money but in in small to medium sized apps and typically this approach might be uh, uh, better because maybe sometimes they don't they don't have the the resources for taking care of a, a server. Uh, several servers scaling and so on and well the, there is also the dependability on a third party company so in this case you are dependent on them and if the if they uh, increase the price you are uh, a bit limited there 